Week three is in the books, and can you say bounce back? Oh, we called not one, not two, not three, but a whole bunch of touchdowns last week. But we're not done yet because week four is upon us. But before we do dive into week four, we got to take a look back at the week that was. This is the pre-snap, and it starts right now. You're listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star. The top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now, here are your hosts, fantasy football experts, Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome to the pre-snap right here on the LineStar app. It's me, and it's Chris Meany. And it's you, and we are back recapping the week. We've got uh, Monday, Thursday slate ahead of us. We're going to talk about some of the big performers in DFS and some of the big busts as well. Recap everything for you, plus the wagering show too. Another good week. Another week, another upset special in the books. I'm three for three, Meanie. I, I'm, I'm money in the bank. That's what they call me. Joey P, money in the bank. Cha-ching. Was it the Lions? <laughs> was it the Lions that we talked about? I know you and I were on that midweek. No, last week it was the Lions upset. beating the Chargers. Uh, week one it was the Bills beating the Jets, and this week it was the Houston Texans not only covering but winning Lovely. the game outright. Bing, nice. bingo, bango. Locked you up. and I t- last show. I, I know we're not doing the wager show with you, but the last show that you and I talked, we had both liked the Lions. We loved that spread. I mean, the Eagles had flat out canceled practice midweek, and it looked like it because they were dropping balls all over the place. And we had said, like, not only should the Lions cover, but they might win this game outright, and they certainly did. Yeah, and uh, we got back on track. Last week we got shut out on touchdown calls. Very, very rare for us that we get shut out on anything. Home run calls, touchdown calls, nothing. But uh, this week, Chris Meany got on the board with Dalvin Cook. That was his running back. Kenny Galladay, unfortunately, didn't go all day, but that's okay. Dalvin Cook, that's one on the board, so chalk it up there. Uh, I had uh, Aaron Jones, who had not one but two, even though it wasn't a very good day for him. It's about calling touchdowns, and I called the touchdown, so that's two. That's three total. And then Mike Evans matched that three and said, here, I got three more (laughs) for you. So Mike Evans had himself a day. And this, you know, looking back on it, and listening to the clip that I know has been out there, and we won some people some merch too. So the merch giveaway, I want congratulations out there. Uh, the the dude that I won the merch for, you're welcome. I hope you enjoy your free hat or whatever it is that Line Star is getting you. But uh, let me tell you, man, it was uh, it was pretty easy. I thought. I mean, you, the Giants stink. On top of the Giants stinking, Mike Evans was ill week one. He wasn't able to yeah. barely make it onto the field. Then they turned around for a short week. They had to travel. It was going to happen eventually. The overreaction of Mike Evans. Oh, my God, Chris, I couldn't even handle it. Yeah, he was one of the better buy low candidates out there. And now that window is absolutely closed. And and what was even the kicker from a DFS standpoint, we had said this, like Chris Godwin was more expensive than Mike Evans. It was an easy fade away from Godwin and to get involved with Mike Evans. And and that's exactly what Jameis Winston and Bruce Arians did from the get-go right away. Like, if you watch that game, it was Evans- First target, second target. Like, let's get Evans involved today. He's feeling healthy. He had a monster game. 15 targets, eight grabs, 190 and three touchdowns. Yeah, yeah he had himself a good month Evans. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever? And Winston oh, wow. along with him, too. I wish OJ Howard was a little better. I mean, at know, least he got like, some looks. He got some looks. Yeah, he got did, some, but, yeah. he, you know, it wasn't what I like. I guaranteed double-digit PPR points. He got nine. Nine and a half, yeah. depending on your scoring. You, you got to kind of take that as a win, honestly. <laughs> I'm a failure. No, 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 no. He a had failure, nothing, Chris. Joe. In week two, he had nothing. He didn't even get a target. So there were people dropping him. Like his ownership was like 15% lower than what it was heading into week two. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he didn't get the nine and a full point, but he still got some looks. I, I, and to me, that is at least encouraging that, oh, hey, we have a guy in here that can. Uh, it's It's a definite mismatch one-on-one like anytime there's one-on-one coverage with him in the middle of the field it's a mismatch throw him the ball i'm a failure and so is oj howard no <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll see how it goes i'll tell you who wasn't a failure and we'll just get right at it. let's talk about the top performers um and let's talk let's start with daniel jones you know there was a lot of speculation on a lot of these quarterbacks who were out there there was Mason rudolph uh there was jones there was allen there was all these guys right allen was very efficient but it was all about daniel jones i mean what a first start out of the gate for this kid the debut throwing for 336 rushing for two throwing for two 
winning the game without Saquon Barkley on the field. Oh my God, Chris, I don't know if it gets any better. I don't know if I remember a road debut for a quarterback ever quite this good. And all those giant fans were all bitching and moaning all summer about how Gettleman ruined the team. I don't hear him anymore. Where'd they all go? Yeah, I think a lot of people owe Gettleman, Jones, and the Giants an apology today on Twitter and social media and and even in just, you know, higher ups that that get paid way more than you and I do to break down guys that come out of the draft because it's been a small sample size, but in the preseason, I liked his anticipation throws. It was just a new offense. It was a different field. They had bootlegs. They had zone reads. You saw him run in a couple touchdowns. He called his own number. The fact that he had that 75-yard game-winning drive down the stretch with only three minutes left without Saquon that you alluded to. It was a very impressive performance. Say what you want, that it was the Bucs. I think that their defense is a lot better than what some people say. The fact that they were down in this game and got, what, 17 points in the second half, it looked like they were absolutely done. They made some adjustments at half, and Jones looked good. He made some nice throws. He leaned on his two best weapons in, in Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard. And, again, this offense just looks better with, with Daniel Jones in there, and they're going to get Golden Tate back in a couple weeks. So, uh, yeah, it does suck that he lost Barkley, but still, very impressive performance. Only Russell Wilson with more fantasy points than him last night. Yeah, it, it was unbelievable. Russell Wilson was great, too, in garbage time. Uh, yeah. You got to love this effort. 400 yards at the end. They, they kind of, you know, tried to make it a game, but a little too little too late. And of course, along with him, he drug uh, Tyler Lockett to a hell of a game, too. Back-to-back games with double-digit receptions for him, so... All that panic after week one, which I was part of that panic. I was like, I don't know. One catch, one touchdown. I don't know if we could be this good every week, this efficient. But uh, the volume certainly made me feel a lot better. Winston, we mentioned earlier, 383 touchdowns. Patrick Mahomes is always Mahomes. And Deshaun Watson, who I said would be awesome, was. I wish DeAndre Hopkins was better. Uh, I thought that was the guy. Akins, what, what the hell? where the hell did that come from? Well, both tight ends, using both tight ends, not, not giving the ball to Hawkins. On the Texans? I didn't know they had a tight end. I never right? even yeah. a tight end for the Texans. Jordan Aiken, who the heck's that? Darren Fells, is he still playing in the league? Like, unbelievable. Those guys, you know, between the two of them, you know, had over 100 yards, three touchdowns, and double-digit targets. This is not something that you're going to be able to count on on a week-to-week basis. But, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, a little bit of a, you know, down, or down game from him, I suppose. It seems like his floor, six grabs for 67. The big – you know, question mark that I have in this offense is, yeah, they've never been a really good, they've never been great running the football for one. Like Carlos Hyde fell in the end zone, you know, yesterday and the week before that he had a ton of carries 20, I think still under a hundred yards, but Duke Johnson is, this guy got a lot of hype when he was with Houston and Lamar Miller went down that he was going to be a guy that can touch the ball 10 to 15 times in this offense, get 10 to 12 carries. I personally didn't buy into that because I had never seen him do it. Yeah. He did it in college, now we're looking at a guy in Duke that, you know, left that game yesterday with only four touches and last week didn't have any work in the passing game. So, you know, pretty disappointing performance from Duke over the past couple of weeks. I thought he'd be more involved in this offense. Yeah. Um, anyone else here? I mean, Jacoby Brissett had a very good game. Uh, Brady was good. Mariota actually showed up with no touchdowns. But uh, look, overall from the touchdown from the, the quarterback position, you know, Matt Ryan with three touchdowns and 300. That's kind of the last guy to talk about rushing leaders. Well, Christian McCaffrey certainly had a good game under Kyle Allen. So I know there's nothing that I want more than for Kyle Allen to have a good run here and have a controversy at quarterback with Cam Newton. That would just make me so happy because you know how I feel about Cam Newton. I'm just not a fan. I feel so the same I, way. I'm not a fan either. I, don't know if I'm gonna, yeah. better. I was just going to say, tell me the offense didn't run better because it absolutely did. Without his did. moaning and bitching and complaining about everything and dragging his ass all over the field every time something doesn't go his way. Kyle Allen just went out there. For better or worse, you know, kind of like Jacoby Brissett. It's like, hey, the world's falling down on you. Jacoby Brissett found ways to make plays, did what he had to do. And Kyle Allen, just, you know, hey, it's not always perfect, but you know what? He executed, and Christian McCaffrey certainly didn't look the worst for wearing this offense with him. No, he didn't. He had the big play, 76 yards, but he had 153 yards on 24 attempts. So you got to be satisfied as, you know, a McCaffrey owner. You play him in DFS. He was he was a great play, too, especially recency bias. He had that poor week, two. Cam is out. People are a little uncertain with Carolina's offense. But Kyle Allen did very well. I mean, 19 for 26, four passing touchdowns. I mean, Cam has gone, I think, four, at least four games without throwing a passing touchdown dating back to last season. And, yeah, Cam's not 100%. He's already ruled out of week four's game. So we're going to get a little bit of Kyle Allen. We're going to get a test. Now he's going to go into Houston. Then he's going to have Jacksonville next, but I I thought the offense looked better. And if he has another good game like this, maybe they just hold back Cam Newton for a couple more weeks. It's very possible. 
All right, let's continue on here to some of the guys who had good days on the ground. Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard both had 100 yards rushing and touchdowns. That was that was pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned. Like, boy, oh, boy, Miami, I knew you were bad, but this is uh, this really is historically bad. You really are pushing the envelope. Well, Pollard had a better day than Zeke. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. And you know yeah. what? A good day, too. Philip Lindsay, 21 yes. for 81 and two touchdowns and some receiving yards to boot. Now, I don't want to overreact to this because Freeman still got plenty of opportunities and this was the big Lindsay game, which was bound to happen. Lindsay's still the better back, I say. But in your season-long leagues, I would be buying on Royce Freeman, especially if I'm a Lindsay owner, because now's the time to buy cheap because people will panic off this good game. And I think that Freeman all of a sudden becomes an opportunity to just stash him. And God forbid something happens to Lindsay, boom, Freeman's right there, and he becomes the bell cow. Well, they ran the ball 36 times between Well, they have to. Guys. Joe Flacco's their quarterback. I know. And Flacco, I mean, yeah, he can't throw the ball down the field. He can't, he can't hit anybody. So the big takeaway for me, yeah, Philip Lindsay had that game. It was, it was nice to see, and he's going to be involved in games when they're down and you got to figure Denver is going to be down probably, you know, 70% of the time, like really. And, but for Freeman, seven targets last week and five targets yesterday. So as much as we like to say, Lindsay is that guy to get all the work in the passing game. Freeman has shown to me, that he is going to be a part of this passing attack as well moving forward. I mean, last season, he had 20 targets and 14 catches. He's already at 13 targets and 10 catches after three games. So he is a part of this offense as well. And yeah, I think a pretty good call by you is a, a by low candidate. You could have lost Barkley. You're sitting here with James Conner. You don't know what to do with Todd Gurley. Yeah, Todd Gurley Bell's has, on a bye next week and that's going nowhere. Yeah. yeah, Gurley has four catches in three games. I mean, that's not what we're used to seeing with Gurley. So there's some other backs out there that are available that, you know, are, are getting some work in the passing attack. And he's one of them. No, don't talk to me about Gurley because it's just going to make me depressed. Like we can't, we can't do the show if we talk about him right now. We just can't. Uh, we can't talk about Mark Ingram though because Old Man River keeps doing it. Let me tell you Big something. Day. Sixteen Big for one hundred three and three touchdowns. Huge day for Ingram. We loved him week one. We probably should have been more on him this week, to be honest. We really yes. should have talked about him a little bit more. So bad job by us. We will always take ourselves to task. We love to pat ourselves in the back. We'll take victory laps, but we're also going to put the weight on our shoulders when we're wrong. And we really didn't highlight Ingram enough, but I think going forward, you can count on touchdowns and you can count on volume from Ingram going forward. Uh, Outside of that, those are really the big rushing performances of the day. Receiving, we already know it's Mike Evans, but after that, Keenan Allen, 13 for 183 and two touchdowns. Oh man, this was the big Keenan Allen game. You get one of these a year and this was it. Yeah, you really do. And you know what? He's been pretty consistent, you know, since week one. And with some of these guys who are questionable, like Hunter Henry is not going to be back for a little bit. Mike Williams is is definitely dealing with something. I mean, this is somebody who has 42 targets after three games now. 17 yesterday, 15 the week before, 10 the week before that. This is his floor. Not his floor in terms of 183 and 2 and 13 grabs, but his floor is, is double-digit targets, and he's probably going to reel in 7 to 8 of those and flirt with 100 yards. So, yeah, a huge game from him. And a huge game from Cooper Cup, who you and I have talked about numerous times That's Jared Goff's boy. It really is, especially inside the red zone. You saw it last year, the year before, and yesterday you saw it. It was on point as well. 12 targets, 11 grabs, two touchdowns, both coming inside the red zone. He is the go-to guy for Jared Goff when they get inside the 20. Another loss for the Chargers, though. Just yeah, uh, another <clears throat> loss for the Chargers. If you put it out there, just yeah. another loss. I just they're 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 gonna win this week because they got Miami, I believe. Well, the schedule gets a lot softer. Miami, Denver, and yeah. Pittsburgh are all three winnable games. But and they better win. Healthy by then. Yeah, they're gonna they, they, they yeah, they better I mean, win. <laughs> those good. are all three <laughs> games that they should win. Um, but who knows? There's always seems to some seems to be something with the Chargers. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just think this team was buying its own. They were just drinking the own Kool-Aid, like like the Cleveland Browns, another team, another loss for the Cleveland Browns. And I'm telling you right now, you look at the schedule. We just did on the Black Book show, and we went through it. They got the Ravens coming up. They got the Patriots. They've got like the schedule. They have like one lock win, maybe, maybe against Seattle at home there. But outside of that, I don't know, man. I don't even know if that's a lock. I'm telling you, they, they, you might not see Freddie Kitchens make it through Halloween. I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a bad scene. Uh, I don't know what the answer is, but right now, Cleveland just. So, so what just you said. The I know. Yeah. The hype is Freddie kitchens. I mean, the play calling is, is crazy for one. I mean, the draw play fourth and nine midfield draw ridiculous. And then on the five with four chances to win the game, they don't try to run once with Chubb. It's, it's unbelievable to me. The line is not good. 
Baker's getting hit quick. He needs to get the ball out quicker. Um, I, you know, he just hasn't looked good. He's feeling the heat. He's feeling the pressure. He's backpedaling and he's just tossing balls. Three touchdowns, five interceptions. He doesn't have a game over 17 fantasy points in these three weeks. And you're right. Well, we talked about, I, I think maybe more so you, like maybe they start off strong and then they kind of falter towards the end. It could be the opposite because after those tough games, I mean, Denver, Pittsburgh, Miami, Pittsburgh, Cincy, Arizona to kind of finish the season. But they need to definitely make some changes, and it doesn't seem like Freddie Kitchens is going to give up play calling anytime soon. But my goodness, yesterday was really tough to watch. That was a head scratcher. Yeah. Well, you know, defense still okay. Defense is great. Williams isn't there anymore, but you know, it's different when you're the just the coordinator, and then when you become the head coach, it's a little different, a little bit more yeah, responsible. Seems like a lot of it's on his plate right now. Yeah, I'll tell you what's on on Darren Waller's plate: a whole lot of targets. Oh, Let me tell yeah. you, oh, thirteen of fourteen for one thirty-four, no touchdowns. But look, you're loving Waller right now. Algorithm is going to catch up eventually. They're going to be a bad team, always playing from behind. So that's good for Waller. So just keep running him out there at tight end until the price starts to catch up to him a little bit. And we'll see going forward on this week how much it does. Julio was brilliant. As always, Evan Ingram, another big game for the tight end position there. So we had two big uh, tight end performances with Waller and Ingram. And now the Giants are going to have to rely a little bit more on Ingram and Shepard and hopefully Golden Tate in two weeks too when he comes back because Barkley's going to be out for Looks like a while here. Could miss up to six weeks or so with that uh, high ankle sprain. Never a good thing. Uh, and it always sucks because you lose a talent like that just for the game. It sucks. It sucks for fantasy owners. But in daily, at least you don't have this hanging over your head. But it certainly does put a little bit of a damper because as great as Daniel Jones was, you want him to play with Saquon Barkley, not Wayne Gallman. Right. Yeah. And they only have two backs in the roster, so they're going to have to do something else, whether that's a trade. I doubt they're going to trade for Kenyon Drake, but I mean, I can't give the Giants the benefit of the doubt not to make dumb trades at times. So they could do that. They could bring up CJ Anderson. He's available. You know, Jay Jai is obviously a name that's been tossed around. So they're going to have to bring in another back. But Evan Ingram is as solid as it gets. I mean, I, I could make a case for him and Waller ahead of Kittle as, as just two top five tight ends the rest of the way because of the volume that they're going to get, especially Waller. He is the go-to guy in this offense. Derek Carr doesn't take any shots downfield. You saw last year with Jared Cook. It was his, his go-to guy, and it's the same thing. I think you can just count on close to double-digit targets for Waller every single week, and he's reeled in almost all of them, 26 of his 29. So, he's yeah, he's locked in for me as a top-five tight end. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Monday-Thursday slate tonight. Obviously, Monday – We've got uh, a home dog here by a lot, which is usually a lock on Monday night. Just want to point that out there. <laughs> Historically, from a betting standpoint, the home dog's been very, very uh, fruitful. Let's say to put it that way. Uh, you got the Bears coming into town here, and Trubisky's looked awful. Defense is great. Maybe this is the game Trubisky turns around. I don't know. McLaren is obviously a guy that you know you like in this game. Montgomery, I still will pound the table for, but there's just. To me, there's just still a limitation until Trubisky figures it out again. Last year's game log, I went back and I peeled into it this weekend. This was Trubisky. He would have great games and terrible games. He hasn't had a great game yet. He's been inconsistent last year. So far, nothing but bad. So I'm waiting for the turnaround. Do you think he gets it tonight against the Redskins on the road? I think we'll see a little bit of a better game, but you're right. It's hard not to have a better game when you know he's in week one, he threw for 228 yards. He was 26 for 45 in week two. He threw for 120 yards. He was 16 for 27. So, I mean, dating back and looking at his at his history, when this guy throws the ball more than 36 times, he's one in seven. So you, you want – I think you need to see the Bears – established the run game. Montgomery was a little bit better. He at least got a lot of work in week two. 18 carries was, was top 12 among any back last week. So I expect him to continue to get some work, rely on the run game. Maybe that will open up things for Mitch Trubisky, but I'm not confident. I'm not all that confident. I know the spread is five. I think the Bears win this game. But again, because of their defense, I can see another low scoring game like a 17 to 10. You, and, you, and you just hope if you're a Bears fan or a Trubisky owner, I don't know why you don't him at this point, that he just can move the ball and make some make some throws other than Allen Robinson. Let's get Tariq Cohen involved. Let's see if Anthony Miller can get involved. Um, yeah, this offense does not look good to start the season, but this is a, a cakewalk matchup for them to to get, kind of get going here. All right, and then you've got the Eagles or Packers now. So I'll tell you what, I am not paying up for Aaron Rodgers. I'm just not doing it anymore. And my concerns with whether or not you could support a second wide receiver of note in this offense anymore, it came to fruition. And, and unfortunately for Devontae Adams owners, it came on him, which that I did not see coming at all. MVS had the big game in this one. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, they... 
We said it was coach speak, but you know what? Jamal Williams had more carries than Aaron Jones. Jones had the two touchdowns, which kind of saved the day for him. But the Packers defense I love. I don't like this Eagles team. I know Miles Sanders had some good moments. He also had some fumbles. The Eagles had Aguilar play in this one. This is a short week. I know he had two touchdowns. He had some drops. Now they're going to play this Packers defense. I think this is another L for the Eagles. Uh, Ertz you can depend on. Um, he's probably the only tight end you could probably even start in the Monday, Thursday slate. <laughs> yes. Is that safe to say? Yeah, you're going like, to have to. Yeah, you're going to have to. You have to start Ertz, number one, just because of the attrition on the Eagles. And then after that, a quarterback of these four guys, uh, I don't love starting Aaron Rodgers. I don't want to pay the price for him. I, I'll, I guess I'll go with Wentz and hope for, you know, hope for the best. But this is a tough thing with these four quarterbacks on the Monday, Thursday. Yeah, it really is. Um, the who matchup. For- who would have thought you'd say that? Like, do you want to just pay up for Rodgers and go with Ertz, or do you want to take the Wentz and Ertz side of this one? It's. It's definitely between, I think you go with back and forth between both Wentz and Rodgers. I mean, I think you avoid tonight's game because, as I said, I think it's going to be low scoring. Even 40.5 total, I I would even take the under in that. I'm seeing like a 30-point game here today. So I, I would go back and forth between the two. And you're right about the running backs. I mean, Jamal Williams played 61% of the snaps yesterday, and, and Jones only played 39%. And it, it looks like a split there. But it looks like that's what LaFleur wants to do. And on the other side, you're not going to be able to trust any of the Eagles back. So I think you get involved with Montgomery, maybe AP or, or Chris Thompson, rather. And then you do take some pass catchers in this game because it's probably going to be the higher total. Aguilar was fine. Yeah, he had some drops, but he still ends up with 8, 50, and two, 2 touchdowns. It looks like Alshon Jeffrey's going to be back. So um, maybe more of the attention goes to him. I think Aguilar is still going to be a part of this offense, but Wentz is, or Ertz is the guy to play a tight end. There's only two options. You go Ertz or you spend all the way down for Vernon Davis because Jordan Reed's already ruled out. But again, the upside just seems to be limited with Washington's offense having to go up against Chicago. So I, I would take some of these pass catchers, MVS. I know Devontae yeah, I like MVS really this disappointing, one too. but MVS against that Eagles secondary is, is kind of the way to go. You saw what Marvin Jones did yesterday. And even Galladay had a bad game. But all of the, he still got a ton of looks. He just had a couple drops and a couple missed throws by Stafford. He still came away with eight targets. Just only caught two of them. So yeah, I think you take he, Green Bay you defense, dial up. Yeah, yeah, you take Aguilar, you take MVS, and you take McLaren. That's that's what I do. That that's that's my trio right there. I don't know how you feel about that group. And yeah, you just hope for and, you, and you probably get involved. And you probably get involved with Chris Thompson, per- perhaps, if you're playing DraftKings. You know, he could catch six or seven balls for you, and you just move on. You get value, and it saves yourself a little bit of cash. All right, uh, let's do a quick uh, look ahead. Uh, Next week, you're going to have Kansas City going on the road to Detroit. So they're back out on the road after two road games, then a home game, back out on the road again. Saquon's going to be out of this one as Washington comes. But I think Daniel Jones and the Giants can do enough against Washington, even though that that defense is so bad and New York is so bad. Christian McCaffrey is going to be 9K on FanDuel uh, at Houston. DeAndre Hopkins, super expensive in that game too. Same with Julio. Yep. It's the usual suspects. And then, of course, is the very popular Chargers. Uh, Austin Eckler is going to be very popular against Miami. So will Keenan Allen. I think it's very difficult not to want to get involved with those two guys this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tough. And the Chargers open up as 16-point favorites. So they should be able to roll against Miami. And, and Eckler had a, had a bit of a down game. Um, but he, I, I would expect him to bounce back. And you know what? You may even see some Justin Jackson for people who are in deep season-long leagues who maybe can't get their hands on a running back to replace a guy like Saquon Barkley or, you know, or Le'Veon Bell, like you mentioned, uh, who's on by this week. So it's not great. It's not ideal. But, you know, if you're listening, you could be in one of those leagues, a 16 team league where you have to, to you have to do something like that. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see moving forward as well as just Seattle, what they're going to do with with Chris Carson. If, you know, another fumble from this guy, Joe, it's been three weeks, three fumbles. And, you know, it resulted in 50 plus passes from Russell Wilson. So keep an eye on Rashad Penny, if he's going to be able to get in the lineup or CJ Procise. But I don't know if Carson's completely in the doghouse, but man, he's not, close. he's got to be close. Man. Being in there. He's at least yeah. tied to the post. Oh, he's <laughs> tied. tied to the doghouse. He's tied to the, the way post, that Pete least. Carroll runs. Yeah. He's not going to put up with any more fumbles. Ooh. I mean, that basically cost him the game yesterday, a couple special teams plays, but Chris Carson putting the ball on the ground again, cost them a game at home. Yeah, and you got the Jets on a bye as well as the 49ers. 49ers were 3 and 0. I think they're a soft 3 and 0. Uh so we'll see what happens there. We got the Colts. We're going to be without TY Hilton for at least a week, maybe more. I still think they can do enough easily to beat Oakland and really they should be undefeated too. They really should. It was nice to see Vinatieri show up again and come back. That was uh, that was a good story. The Rams at Bucks talk about a laser light show. 
Chris Meany, it might have to be uh cup and, and golf and everybody again against that Bucks defense, man. It's hard not to get involved there. Oh yeah, it's really tough. Not like I said, Cup is Cup's the man. Cooks had a great day yesterday. Robert Woods has been the guy who's been fairly quiet after what was a pretty steady season last year. But yeah, these guys are are all in play. Even on the other side, I think Godwin and Evans again, they're gonna they're gonna tougher matchups against the Rams secondary, but still absolutely in play. And you know, I've been pretty impressed with Jacoby Brissett. Like seven touchdowns in three games, taking care of the football, not taking a ton of shots downfield, but you know, doing a good job. So it'll be interesting to see who steps up without T. Y. Hilton there. Maybe I think honestly, instead of like reaching for like Campbell and and uh, Kane, that it's probably more of like Ebron and Doyle. Agreed. It's, it's Doyle, it's Ebron, football. it's even Pascal, too, who had a big game. It's yeah. the, They're just going to rely heavily on the tight ends, and that's what they're going to do, and they're going to eat up those linebackers over there in Oakland, and it's going to be perfectly fine. And look, these are my Cinderella story, the Colts. I was talking about them all offseason. I think they're going to rally around Jacoby Brissett. They're a good football team. Not as good without Andrew Luck, but still good enough. Marlon Mack, as long as he's on the field, I think they're – I'm telling you, man, Colts, Colts can get it done. They really can. Oh, yeah. The I vision can't. is completely up for grabs, and, and they may be the favorites. I'm, I'm, I know it's Houston, but, like, honestly, I feel like the Texans are just slightly overrated. Um, yeah. I, I, I think the Colts are just a, such a sound football team. Speaking well, of overrated, tell me how this schedule works out for the Browns coming up. At Ravens, that's a loss, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have to travel to the 49ers. I know the 49ers haven't protected the football very well, but they're running the football and playing defense well. Defense so I say that's a loss. Defense is legit. Yeah, it's a winnable game, but it's not a – yeah, it's not a shoot. Okay, then they're home against Seattle. Winnable, but – Again, yeah. winnable, but we're not giving it to them. And no. then they have to go to New England after that. <laughs> and then in Denver, which is – which really is – Denver's in Denver, not great, but in Denver is – yeah, those are yeah. Buffalo, I think, is the only team in the NFL top five against the pass and the run. They they're just That's legit. We've been talking about them for a long time now. They're a really good D. So yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland has some work to do. They really do. And yeah, I can't give them any wins. I can't go up and down their schedule and give them a win. As I said, after week two, I was more worried about them. And then after week one's performance, like to beat the Jets twenty three twenty and see the struggles that they had, I wasn't impressed with that win. It was one big OBJ touchdown that put the game away. Other than that, like they were playing against a third string quarterback and I can't give them a lot of credit. Their defense at least is playing well, but their offense is they need to make some changements and some adjustments. We'll see moving forward how they do that. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that. Uh, anything else you're looking for, you know, heading into week four or learn from week three, you want to share with our audience here? Well, heading into week four, I guess I am intrigued with this Buffalo and New England matchup. Uh, the Patriots are all obviously phenomenal, but we'll see with Julian Edelman. Is he going to be able to play this week? I know x-rays were negative on his ribs, but again, we just talked about Buffalo's defense. So that will be that will be the game that I'm going to watch is like the only legit threat that the that the Pats have inside that division. So it'll be interesting to see that defense up against New England and Tom Brady and. And just seeing how you know Josh Allen can maybe counter what they can do in that offense. So that that's a game that I'm I'm certainly looking forward to for sure. And um, you know, other than that, you know, it was nice to see Kyler Murray run around a little bit, but still some struggles with him for sure. Yeah, he's going to be a work in progress. Well, it, uh, it was good to see some of these quarterbacks go out there and get W's for their teams. The Giants finally getting a W. Teddy Bridgewater getting a W in Seattle, even though really the defense was the story in that game. I think for the most part. Oh, uh, yeah, Kyle Allen go out there and get a W. Mason Rudolph, eh, not so much. Josh no. Rosen, eh, not so much. But, you know, God bless Josh Rosen. He, uh, that's, that's a tough, tough situation here. Yeah, and Minshew. And Minshew kicked off the week with what was a pretty good performance from him as well, right? So, But for the Steelers, I mean, I saw a, a stat here. I'll give the credit to uh, Josh Dubo. Um, he's associated press writer. He says the Steelers completed two passes yesterday versus the Niners that traveled more than one yard downfield. That's the fewest for any team in any game since Tim Tebow and the Broncos had one versus the Chargers in 2011. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Big well, downgrade the- for everybody in the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. So Miami is going to be historically bad. Let's play a little game too. Let's see if there's any W's here. Uh, they have the Chargers next week, which is probably a loss. Uh, then they're at home again against the Redskins. That that's winnable. I it's think it's winnable. It's winnable. winnable. At yeah. Buffalo, no. At Pittsburgh, no. no. But God, would that just that would just be? <laughs> I mean, as a Patriots fan, I I mean, there's nothing I think I could enjoy more besides another Super Bowl. Except that that would be that would be my Christmas. That would be fantastic. Then they play the Jets. We'll see if they'll, they'll have Darnold back by then. So probably probably a loss there. Loss. At Andy's a loss at home against. 
uh, Buffalo's a loss. Oh, my goodness. They play the Browns in week 12, Chris. Can you imagine if they beat Cleveland? In, in Cleveland? <laughs> I don't think they will. But No, I don't think they will. But could you imagine? Like, that would be no, so no. Cleveland, right? To, to Well, they have two games against the Jets, a game against the Giants, a game against the Bengals, a game against the Redskins. That's probably not – do you think they get one? Like, do you think <laughs> you think one is reasonable? I don't think they win a game all year. No, I don't I, think they do either. They, they, they have be. looking at the schedule. They have three shots. It's Washington after the bye week six. It's later on down the down the road. I guess I guess against the Jets, and then the, yeah, that's it. I can give them two shots because week sixteen, you're probably going to have an AJ green that's healthy and a Miami team. That's you think they're checked out now wait till week 16 when they're potentially, you know, Oh, and 14. So no, I don't think they win a game, maybe one, but that's it. Like, yeah, it's kind of crazy, game. man. Unbelievable. But that's where we're at. Who'd have thought here we are. We're sitting at week four and uh, Saquon Barkley is going to be out for a while. The jets have no quarterback. The dolphins are historically bad. The Steelers are awful. They're probably done. Like I think one more loss and they're, they're probably done. They're done. I mean, they're done now. Let's be let's yeah. be frank. Steelers it's the Ravens done. division to, to lose, and the, yeah, that's it. They're done. It is. And let me tell you, Cleveland doesn't look real competitive. <laughs> no. No, they really don't. So yeah, there's some oh, wide open. God. I had the Bills as a playoff team to start as a wild card team, a 10 and 6 squad. They're 3 and 0. Uh, I'm not going to take any victory laps yet. There's lots of football to be played. They almost blew that game a, a home field yesterday against the Bengals, but they they're set up now with Cleveland and Pittsburgh struggling off the top to maybe potentially get in and make some noise in the playoffs. Um, it may just be seeing how the, if Josh Allen can, again, take a step forward and, and not turn the ball over because again, he made some, he made some pretty bonehead plays yesterday. Some mistakes. I'm that, sorry, that'll... Brown. I, I need, I should apologize to the Browns fans. You've been through a lot. You have You've been through a ton. Yes. You've been through a ton and I know you had expectations, but yeah, you have to understand when you have these kind of personalities that are out walking the walk before, you know, doing all this stuff, doing commercials, all these things and drinking the Kool-Aid before they've won anything. It's tough, man. It's just, you got to go put the work in, you know? Yeah. Uh, but you know, you know, they lose in Joku who doesn't help the line out at all. Right. And Jarvis Landry definitely seen some frustrations from him last night. I know nine, nine targets was a season high for him, but this guy's got 10 catches through three games. That's not uh, the Jarvis Landry that we're used to seeing, right? We knew that there was going to be a little bit of a decline in his usage with Odell Beckham Jr. coming to town, but there was a time where Jarvis Landry, you know, went three years leading the NFL in catches over that span. And I can sense, I sensed his frustrations yesterday in that game. There's just, the offense is not looking good. No, it's not. It's certainly not. Uh, again, it's all in motion, baby, but we're going to break it all down for you. Make sure you are downloading and subscribing and listening to the pre-snap we're here uh every monday to recap we're here every thursday for you previewing the weekend at dfs and of course on friday mike randall and i are doing the wagering show which we are absolutely crushing that so make sure you're uh hanging out with us all week getting everything you need and make sure you're using that line star app go over to line star app right now download use it i'm telling you if you're playing dfs if you're doing anything like we're you know wagering any of that stuff it's all there, all the tools, all the optimizers, all the news, the breakdowns, the stats, everything you need. It's all right there for you to make your life a lot easier, streamline the process, and get you paid. So that'll do it for us. You can follow me at Joe Pizzopia17. You can follow Chris at Chris Meany. And, of course, check us all out at the Line Star app, at Line Star app, and, of course, at Line Star NFL as well. That'll do it for me and Chris Meany. This episode of the pre-snap is done, which means there's nothing left to do except set down with... You've been listening to the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by LineStar. Hit subscribe, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany.